If you're debating between the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 STM and the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 in 2023, this review is for you. In the upcoming review, we'll closely examine the capabilities and characteristics of both lenses, providing you with a detailed comparison to assist with your choice. Let's get started. Let's begin by discussing the capabilities of these lenses. First, we will talk about the minimum focusing distance. This distance represents the closest possible distance a lens is able to focus on a subject. To illustrate, when taking a close-up photo of a flower, if you move in too close, you may notice that the camera cannot focus on the object. Simply put, a lens with a shorter minimum focusing distance lets you take pictures of subjects that are closer. When selecting a lens, it's important to keep this in mind. In our case, the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 has a minimum focusing distance of 35cm, or 13.78 inches, while the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 needs at least 45cm, or 17.72 inches. Regarding sharpness, the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 lens is sharper than the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens. With that in mind, it's important to remember that sharpness will not be even across the frame, especially with more affordable lenses. As a general rule, the center of the frame will be sharper than the edges. Also, lenses tend to be less sharp at wider apertures, such as f1.8. Next up, vignetting. So, both lenses display some of it. However, it is not difficult to correct during post-production if needed. Some people actually prefer having some vignetting in their pictures as it can add depth to the image. Okay, what about chromatic aberration? There is some chromatic aberration present in both lenses, but it is not a major issue. To notice it, you need to zoom in significantly. It's most likely to occur when taking photos in low light conditions such as during sunset. Chromatic aberration usually manifests as a color bleed following the straight edges in your photos. Even though many people don't notice it, it's important to note that this happens with both lenses. Almost any lens can have chromatic aberration, but it is more common in less expensive lenses. Next up, what about IS or image stabilization? Unfortunately, nope, neither of these lenses has IS. This is far from great as it helps stabilize videos and it often helps reduce motion blur in photos. Usually, I film all of my B-roll with a lens that has image stabilization specifically the Canon RF 15-35mm f2.8 LIS USM. You can find the link down below if you want to check it out. When it comes to autofocus, the Canon lens has an STM motor, while the Yongnuo lens appears to have a DC type motor. STM motors are rather silent and smooth, whilst DC motors tend to be less smooth and noisier. In this case, the Canon lens has significantly better and quieter autofocus, which may or may not be a problem. For example, if you're taking photos of inanimate objects or doing portraits, the subject will usually be still, so a second or two extra to focus may not be an issue. However, if you want to do sports or wildlife, the Yongnuo's lens slow autofocus will constantly cause you to miss great shots. We'll go more in depth about this later in the review. Are you wondering if the lenses are suitable for vlogging? Unfortunately, neither of these lenses is recommended for this application due to certain limitations. Both lenses lack built-in image stabilization, or IS, which can result in unstable footage. Attaching either of these lenses to a camera with in-body image stabilization, or IBIS, like the Canon R5, can assist in compensating for the lack of built-in IS. Nonetheless, another factor worth contemplating is that both lenses have a relatively narrow field of view. As a result, even if you use a Gorillapod, the focal lengths on these lenses may still be excessively zoomed in for vlogging while handheld. The outcome may be that your face will appear too close up in the image, rendering the recording useless. If you want a decent and affordable lens for vlogging, look at the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens with IS in the name. Alternatively, you could use something like the Canon EFS 24mm f2.8, which would be wide enough, but lacks IS, so the footage may be shaky. Okay, so what lens should you choose if you're not interested in vlogging and just want to shoot videos with your tripod-mounted camera? Both lenses suit the scenario, but the Canon lens wins out due to its better autofocus. The price difference might tempt you, but think about it. 
Is that difference worth the frustration of occasionally interrupting the recording to check or get back into focus? If you found this video to be useful, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to check out any of the products I've mentioned in this video, you can find affiliate links down below. Now, what cameras work with these lenses? In this case, both of these lenses work with camera bodies that are either EF or EF slash EFS. Luckily, EF slash EFS cameras are the majority of Canon DSLRs, especially the more affordable ones. The list would include cameras like the Canon 250D, the Rebel series, and so on. As a quick side note, I have actually reviewed all the cameras mentioned. If you'd like to check them out, there is a link down below. Also, if you wish, you can find these reviews by clicking on the card in the top right corner. Okay, now let's briefly cover the optical properties of these two lenses and what all of those numbers in the lens's name mean. The first number, 50 millimeters, indicates the focal length or how zoomed in a lens is. A focal length of 50 millimeters is pretty average as you're not too zoomed in, but the image is not too wide either. Both lenses have a fixed focal length, which means that they are prime lenses. Now, why would you go for prime lenses over zoom lenses? Don't zoom lenses offer more flexibility? Both types of lenses have their own benefits and drawbacks. Prime lenses tend to produce sharper images, while zoom lenses provide more flexibility. Sometimes filmmakers and photographers might start with a zoom lens to test different focal lengths to determine which suits their shot best. Then they'll switch to a prime lens of the right focal length for a sharper outcome. Next up, let's have a look at the aperture. Both lenses have the same aperture size at f1.8, meaning that they can open up quite wide and thus allow in more light. Rather counterintuitively, a smaller f number indicates a broader aperture and ensures better light gathering potential. Now, when it comes to controlling brightness in your images, you can also use shutter speed and ISO. However, they do have their limitations. For example, if you slow down your shutter speed in order to increase the amount of light, once you go slow enough, you're likely to introduce motion blur in your photos. Alternatively, if you bump up your ISO, noise will appear in your pictures. That's why it's better to have a lens with a wider aperture so that you can allow in more light naturally. Going back to focal length a bit, what is the ideal for portraits? The fact is that the focal length you choose will impact the photo's look quite significantly. Wider lenses, such as the 18-55mm, have a broader field of view, while longer lenses, like the 85mm, capture less in the frame. Additionally, there is also distortion. A person's face, for example, will appear differently depending on which focal length is used. Different focal lengths have distinct distortion properties which can significantly alter the subject's appearance in the photograph. Generally speaking, the 85mm lens has become the go-to focal length for portraits because it creates the most attractive representation of the subject's face. The 50mm lens is often considered to be a strong second choice. However, this is not a hard and fast rule. Ultimately, your chosen lens should be based on the subject matter you wish to capture. Right, so how difficult are these lenses to operate? So first things first, both these two are equipped with manual focus rings, which give you the possibility to control your focus manually if you want to do that. On top of that, both are prime, so there is obviously no zoom ring. Are these lenses easy to carry? The Canon lens dimensions are 69.2 by 39.3 millimeters, or 2.7 by 1.6 inches, and its weight is 160 grams or 5.7 ounces. Alternatively, the Yongnuo lens measures 73 by 55 mm or 2.87 by 2.17 inches and its weight is 120 grams or 4.2 ounces. If you want to know the current pricing of these lenses in your area, check out the affiliate links provided below. How durable are these lenses? Firstly, it's important to consider if the mount of the lens is made of metal or plastic. In this instance, the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 lens has a metal mount, whereas the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens does not. Having a metal mount is preferable for longevity. Additionally, it is crucial to check if these lenses have weather sealing and to note what type to determine their capacity to last. Unfortunately, neither of these lenses has any weather sealing. 
Using a UV filter is preferred by many photographers, including myself, to provide extra protection for the lens element. I personally use Sigma ceramic UV filters, which I attach to my lenses immediately after purchasing them. However, they come at a higher cost than other types of filters, but the extra protection they provide, especially to more expensive lenses, is certainly worth the price. By attaching a filter to the lens, it becomes unnecessary to use lens caps, but you can still use them if you prefer. However, given the budget price of these two lenses, Sigma ceramic filters may not be worth it. Finally, it is important to consider the filter size when purchasing filters for these lenses, as it differs from the focal length. The Canon EF 50mm f1.8 lens has a filter size of 49mm, whereas the Yong Neo EF 50mm f1.8 lens has a filter size of 52mm. It's important to remember that filter size is not the same as focal length, since many individuals can confuse the two initially. I hope that this review has been helpful. In case you are actually curious as to how much these products cost where you live, there are affiliate links down below in the description for your convenience. If you would like to check out more of my product reviews, you can either have a look down below where you can find the links, or you can click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? You can leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Remember to like, subscribe, and tap that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.